Hello folks, welcome to the Mauer Monthly for July and August. Thursday is here and so is our jumbo deep dive into ransomware. Who's been breached? What families are updating? And which Russian hacker gang is causing headaches? So sit back, relax, you know the rest. Morning Joe. Morning Adam. So ransomware's been active. Don't you ever have any good news to tell me? <laughs> no. A recent study found that 25% of all UK universities have experienced a ransomware attack in the last 10 years, including Sheffield Hallam University that had 42 attacks in the past seven years. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, but most of the universities mentioned had been attacked multiple times. However, most of the universities that responded also reported they did not pay the ransom, many just restored from backups. That's great. So do you think universities in the UK will be better protected now that they've had 10 years of experience fighting ransomware? It's hard to say, but one point made by Yonut Alessiu from Bleeping Computer mentions, quote, The results from the FOIA are a poor reflection of the recent period, as close to half of all schools receiving the solicitation refuse to give any information, motivating with concerns that admission of an attack would only encourage the hackers. Would attackers go after an organization because it was already attacked? I think logic dictates that going after a previous cybercrime victim is like trying to launch a sneak attack on an enemy who already knows you're coming. So the experience from fighting ransomware would then make them more secure, right? That's the theory. Although clearly some folks believe that admitting you have been victim of a cyber attack is a sign of weakness or insecurity. You know, it happens to everyone. Then there are possible legal difficulties that may affect whether or not a company pays or even reports a ransomware attack. Oh, how so? The General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, is a European Union law that attempts to enforce the safe and secure protection of user data by organizations operating in Europe. Basically, things like databases which are unsecured and accessible online, or even something like having a flash drive with customer data being snatched from a table in a coffee shop could land a company in hot water with authorities and result in fines or worse. So admitting that an attack occurred and inviting possible investigation into how secure or insecure your data storage policies are may be enough reason for some organizations to downplay attacks. In fact, a ransomware group has recently taken advantage of this and is using GDPR threats to try and extort victims. What's that about? So, servers running the MongoDB database software are being targeted by attackers who are focused on insecure deployments of the software, with the goal of accessing databases, stealing data, and replacing it with readme files that demand Bitcoin payment in 48 hours, or else all the data gets released online. And where does GDPR come into play? Well, part of the ransom note claims that if the victim doesn't pay, not only will they release the files, but they'll also report the organization to GDPR authorities, which may lead to a fine or arrest, according to the note anyway. How many databases have fell victim to this? According to the person tracking these infections, Victor Gevers of the GDI Foundation, over 15,000 servers had their files replaced with that ransom note. He obtained this information after querying the internet device search engine Shodan. However, other scanners show that up to 23,000 systems were still affected. Wow, with all those victims, how much are they charging for the ransom? The ransom note's about 135 bucks. That's it? According to a Bleeping Computer article written by Lawrence Abrams and interviewing Victor Gevers, quote, with the ransom amount being small at $135.55, and the worry of GDPR violations, Gevers feels that it may cause some people to pay. The actors then know what data is valuable to the owner and extort them for even more money. Guess that makes sense. Yeah, and it's a lot less than Garmin had to pay. Garmin? The watchmaker? Well, they're more of a fitness brand now, with many tracking and GPS tools used by athletes and boats and regular people alike. They actually have a service that their application linked to in order to upload fitness data or other relevant information. Anyway, the company was hit by a ransomware known as Wasted Locker, and it knocked down a lot of those services in the process. The company ended up using a ransomware negotiation company called Arit IR to pay millions of dollars to the attackers and get everything back up and running again. Who was behind it, do you think? Well, Wasted Locker is a tool known to be associated with the Russian cybercrime gang Evil Corp. Whoa. Yeah, lazy name. 
Anyway, Wasted Locker has been on a bit of a spree over the last few months. In July, it was reported that the malware was found infecting networks of dozens of US newspaper websites. The hackers hosted Wasted Locker executables on those infected servers and, when needed, would download it from the same sites. The goal being to mask the malicious intent of the traffic by making it look like a user just reading the news. So these guys are pretty sophisticated then. Oh yeah, Symantec actually warned folks about this group a month before the Garmin attack was made public. These guys aren't messing around, they only seem to go after well-resourced and likely well-researched organizations, unlike other ransomware families we've seen in the past, who target anyone willing to run the malware. What kind of tricks do they use that are different from other ransomware? First of all, the malware was designed to defeat several behavior-based anti-ransomware tools. How does it do that? Most of these tools use the behavior of an untrusted executable doing ransomware-like things to identify possible ransomware infections. For example, encrypting files and deleting them. The malware reads the contents of a victim file into the Windows Cache Manager, then encrypts the data found in the cache, not the file on disk. Then, when enough of the data in the cache has been modified or encrypted by the ransomware, the Cache Manager automatically writes the modified data to the original file. In simple terms, it replaces the unencrypted legitimate file with the encrypted version and it does this under the umbrella of a legitimate system process, not some shady exe file. So the idea is that if an anti-ransomware tool doesn't see the malware binary actually doing the ransomware stuff, then maybe it won't detect the malware. And that works? For some, probably. But vendors are already updating their tools to detect this kind of behavior, so it may not be a clever trick for much longer. At least until they figure out something new. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, researchers believe that Wasted Locker is manually directed by attackers who utilize things like stolen passwords and suddenly outward facing vulnerable network entry points that allow them to not just launch malware, but scope out a target and determine the best strategy for an attack. Something like that is more difficult to predict and defend against, especially when the actor is proven to be sophisticated and clever. Do you think we're going to see more of Wasted Locker? Absolutely. It's already proven itself multiple times over as being a dangerous and capable malware. Depending on what Evil Corp wants to do next, they could continue trying to ransom corporate networks, or they could set up shop and start selling modified versions of Wasted Locker to other cyber criminals. The ransomware as a service scene is very lucrative. Ransomware as a service? What's that? It's a term used to describe a cybercrime group that develops malware for individual customers to spread. This takes a lot of the overhead out of launching a ransomware attack because previously an attacker might have needed to develop, steal, or buy their own ransomware, then go about trying to infect people with it. The quality of that ransomware was not guaranteed, and it might not even work. With more advanced families of ransomware like Cerber and Locky, the value was in the proven effectiveness of the ransomware. The creators of these families only needed to make slight updates and provide individualized modifications to customers, like what email the victim should reach out to, who would then go about distributing the malware. Once a ransom payment occurs, the creators of the ransomware get their cut and the distributors get the majority of the payment. Isn't this dangerous for criminals though? I mean, what if the guy that they buy their ransomware from decides to put a back door in it? That is a common thing and has happened many times. Really? Yeah, these days it comes down to reputation of the malware, as in, have there been news stories about it or has it been proven in the wild, combined with the reputation of the creators and sellers of the service? Do they have good relationships with other criminals? Can they be counted on to come through on their end of the bargain? And that keeps out shady vendors trying to scam their customers? It's kind of like buying something off the dark net. You have to put your confidence into the seller that they will deliver the product that you are buying, and a lot of times that comes in the form of previous customer reviews. If a criminal developing malware was putting back doors into what they were selling, someone would notice and tell other folks about it. Eventually, the vendor won't be trusted anymore, and nobody will buy their wares. So it really comes down to basic capitalism, I guess. So wrap this all up for me. Ransomware is on the rise again, focused on attacking corporations with malware that not only encrypts files, but also steals it. The tactics used to deploy these forms of ransomware have become more capable, and that amount of effort that goes into these attacks is far greater than what we saw three years ago. 
Ransomware is also evolving as we continuously see new tactics to evade detection and or increase infection and encryption. So we're doomed? Yes, obviously. That's it for today's Mauer Monthly. Tune in tomorrow for another dose of the news. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.